I know there's some designers out there who are thinking about getting a new laptop, new year, maybe you got a new job, maybe, you know, you're going back to school, whatever it may be. And you might be wondering whether the new MacBook M1 laptops are good for design and maybe which one you should buy, right? The best MacBook to buy for designer at the moment, even if you're not on a budget actually, but if you are on a budget, for me, it's the MacBook Air M1 19, $999 one. That's the one you should get. Even if you're doing 3D, it'll be able to handle it. If you're doing any vector-based work, it's gonna crush all of that. If you want, you should try and get some more uh, RAM. I think that's where you should go with. Uh, Storage-wise, you know, it, it depends how you wanna ma manage your storage. If you wanna manage it on device, then of course you need a storage like that. But for example, if you use something like Figma, a lot of your stuff is gonna be cloud-based. Um, if you use stuff like Webflow, that's, you know, obviously there's not gonna be too much on your computer. Uh, so you won't need even that much space if you're running like that. And if you're, you know, trying to cut down and be more minimalist about how you uh, work your computer. But I would say the Air for sure, I would pick the Air over the uh, MacBook Pro, to be honest, because power wise, they are very, very, very similar. I've tested them both. Uh, and if you're talking about design work, they can both handle design work very easily. I do video editing on the air, right? So there is no, like the air is worse or it's like, it's gonna slow you down. The only thing you may have to watch out for is just like I said, the RAM. Unfortunately, when you upgrade RAM with Apple, it is quite expensive. Um, but that aside, if you're just doing stuff in Figma, the base model of the MacBook Air, you will crush it. If you're doing a lot of web-based stuff with like, uh, obviously like Figma, um, Webflow, um, Framer, these kind of programs, you'll crush it. There'll, there'll be no problems. Even with the eight gig version, you just have to watch out not having too many tabs. And you know, ultimately you just have to close stuff that's gonna make you less focused to do your work anyway. So yeah, I don't think it's that big of a deal in terms of um, RAM. You just have to manage it well. Uh, if you're doing a lot of 3D stuff, I'm not sure that going extra with the Pro will really help that. Perhaps making sure you get the eight core MacBook Air uh, would be better than uh, the seven core MacBook Air because of the extra GPU. But I still think you'll, you'll be able to get by. Um, if you're doing a lot of heavy 3D stuff, um, maybe you might want to think about getting the Pro, maybe, because you're gonna have to sustain a lot more uh, performance and the Pro has the fan um, which will allow you to stay in a higher clock um, higher clock speed whereas the MacBook Air doesn't have the fan so you, you're kind of working in bursts but it's the same amount of power uh, in both laptops so it's kind of give and take in terms of that but I would say honestly for most designers you know and I wouldn't have said this previously but the MacBook Air M1 the base model most designers, especially if you're just getting started. If you're just getting started, I mean, obviously you can do with less, right? But if you're just getting started and you want to buy a new laptop, um, you're on a bit of a budget, but you can spend a little bit, because 999, it's not cheap, but uh, it's cheap when it's Apple world, right? But it's not cheap in the, in the real world. Uh, but if you want to spend a bit of money, and obviously if you're using programs that require you to be in uh, Mac OS, I would definitely go with the MacBook Air, 999 that's even cheaper than you know because when i started doing design um i bought the base model macbook pro and at that time it cost me about 12 or 1300 and obviously that laptop is a lot weaker a lot weaker than what you're getting now for 999 so it's a lot weaker it had less memory um, obviously look things move along but it wasn't even that long ago um about five years ago, uh, about five years ago, I got that laptop, and you know it's crazy how things have really moved on, and uh, how the speed of the laptops and the price to speed ratio has come down, and obviously the battery life, which I didn't mention. So the pros do have a bit more battery life. Um, I feel like as a designer, this is probably not going to be too much of an issue because you're going to be working at a desk to do the work for the most part. 
Um, even if you're doing coffee shops, Air and the Pro have enough power. Um, not that you can really do coffee shops now, right? But both the Air and the Pro have enough power to do all of that. Um, so for me, I'd go for the Air, especially if you're just getting started out. But even if you're not, I will just go for an upgraded Air if you, you're not just getting started out, like I did. So I went for the MacBook Air with 16 gigs of RAM and one terabyte hard drive. So that came up to about 1600. And I compared that to the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which I had, uh, and that was from 2020. So that's quite a new 16 inch MacBook Pro. And in terms of performance, they were on, the, they were on level, they were on level. And if you consider that the 16 inch MacBook Pro retails about 2,700 pounds, even though I got it for less than that, um, there was some bug on Amazon. I got the laptop for about 2,100, but it actually retails for about 27. Um, so even that 1,000 pound price difference, the performance wise, it's exactly the same. Um, well, you know, in terms of day-to-day -day use, um, it was basically the same. That 16 inch laptop was great, but I just wanted to downsize a little bit and not have the fans coming on, not have the heat. And that's actually one thing I didn't mention. And probably the most important thing out of all this, and why I think you should get a MacBook Air. There's no fan. It runs cool consistently. Just cool. No fan means no sound. So when you're working, you're not, whatever you're doing, whether you're rendering, whether you, it doesn't matter what you're doing, you're not gonna hear any shh, you're not gonna hear any air sound, you're not gonna hear any, the heat will, even if, it, if it, the warmest it gets will be about your like skin temperature, it's nothing crazy, crazy hot. And it just makes working super serene. And for me, it's kind of underrated. It's not something that Apple would market or anything like that, but just having a laptop that you can just use for a long time and just not getting hot, not getting loud, not blowing air on you. That's what you pay for in my opinion. I hope that helps. Um, I'm still on the road to a thousand subscribers. If you could, can you please, please hit the like button? It takes a moment for you, but it means the world to me. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching, peace.